Hello, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about how you can create SharePoint document approval processes using Power Automate. But before we jump into that tutorial, here's a quick word from this week's sponsor, PlumSale. Another place where you can incorporate approvals is automated document creation. I recommend that you take a look at PlumSale documents. A quick example of automating travel requests within an organization an employee submits a business trip request, and if their manager approves it, a document is automatically generated and the request is escalated to the HR department, ensuring that the employee receives money for estimated travel expenses. Each new item in the SharePoint list where all new requests settle down triggers a power ultimate flow and launches the approval process. If their outcome is approved, then it starts a document generation process. You may wonder how the resulting document each time reflects new information. You just set up a document template inside the Plumtail account and mark all, doc mark all dynamic places with a special placeholders in double curly brackets. You can work with a familiar office format such as Word, Excel or PowerPoint presentations and set the automatic conversion to PDF. Additionally, for the particular case, I added an approved watermark and sent the document via Outlook email. However, there are many more options available to store documents in the cloud. Send for email, uh, e-signature, and more. Um, you can pass data to the template in a variety of ways, our case in SharePoint and Power Automate Action. Back to the flow. For the all dynamic placeholders, we've got fields which we've mapped with the SharePoint trigger output. The Plum Cell Documents Connector for Power Automate also offers actions for document conversion, reading PDF forms, passing CSV files using regular expressions, and much more. Sign up for a 30-day free trial using the link below this video. You can also use the promo code Dougie to get 10% discount on your first year subscription. Thank you, PlumSale, for that. So let's jump into the video, and I'm gonna show you now how you can create a document approval process using Power Automate um, so it's all native functionality directly from the document library. So I've got my document library here on my SharePoint intranet, and it's got a bunch of dummy documents, dummy contracts in here, and I want to set up an approval process. Now, to do this, all I need to do is click on the Integrate button across the top, then click on Power Automate, and what that will do is give me this little drop-down that I can select to create a flow. Now, it's going to show me a bunch of different templated workflows that I can choose from. In fact, there's, there's a whole bunch here, so I'm not going to go through all of them right now. But the top ones are approval-related. So the first one is request manager approval for a selected file. Now, what that means is the trigger will be when you select a contract, you can then send it for your manager's approval. So what that means is it will be the manager of the particular user that's running that approval workflow. Now, how it knows that is it's going to look up in Active Directory the line manager that you have specified against your user profile. However, that is quite limited in terms of how we're sending it. We want to be able to choose who we send it to. The next option is to request approval in Microsoft Teams when a SharePoint item is created. Now, again, this is limiting us a little bit because it just means that the approval process is only going to take place when the document is created, which might be fine for, for some people. But then we get into a bit of a sticky situation when we want to update that document and then send it for approval again. So instead, I'm going to go with this option here, which is request approval in Teams for a selected item in SharePoint. So what this means is it will start off by by having a trigger of selecting the item, then we'll be able to specify within it who we want to send for the approval. And of course, we can do this at any time. So we could set the, the approval to run whenever we want. It doesn't have to be on document creation. So I'm going to select on that template. And what that's going to do is bounce me into the Power Automate Make Studio, which is where you build out your Power Automate workflows. What it's then going to do is, because it knows it's setting up this template, it knows which connectors that it needs to use for the workflow to run properly. Now, if you don't know what a connector is, essentially think of a connector as your approval to pull and push data between different applications inside of Microsoft 365 and external applications as well. So essentially this is a bit like when you install an app on your phone and it says, do we have your permission to connect to your photo library or something like that, for example. It's basically allowing you 
well, it's allowing the app to access data on your behalf. So if any of these are red or they're not approved, you can just click on the sign in button that's next to each of these until you've got all the green ticks. But you won't be able to create the workflow until all of those are green. Once they are, all you need to do is click on that continue button and it's going to then create your workflow for you. Now, this is, as I say, it's fully templated, so we don't need to do a huge amount. There's only a small amount that we need to do, and I'll show you that in a second. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of the workflow because I want it to be really obvious what this is if I ever look up inside of my flows area what this flow is. So I'm going to call this my contract approval. So just type in contract approval like so, whoops, um, and then um, we can see the workflow is already built for us. So I'll just quickly run you through this. And again, if you're new to Power Automate, it's worth knowing that actually in Power Automate, everything, just like everything in life, has a start, a middle, and an end. Now, the starting point is what we call a trigger. It's what's going to start off the workflow. And in this case, it's selecting an item. So we're going to select an item, and it doesn't just mean just clicking an item. We have to select it, and we do have to go and click to run the workflow. But essentially, what this is doing is that's our triggering point. It's also got the ability to take inputs. Now, the two inputs we're going to, uh, to take from this to input into our workflow is the message. So what message do we want to send to the approver? So that might be, hey, can you check out this particular contract for me, blah, 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 blah. And then we've got the approver, so who do we want to send it to? So that's where you can then enter the uh, email address of the approver. So if I just scroll down a bit further, then you can then see, uh, again, I'm not going to go through all of these, but essentially it's getting the item, so it's getting that particular uh, item that we're talking about. It's getting my current profile so it knows who I am, and then it's starting the approval process. So the title might be, uh, let's say, contract approval. And the email address that we want to send this to um, will be the email address um, of the approver field. So if we just type in approver into this box, you can see for a selected item, we've got the approver. So we can send it to the approver. The details, we're going to use the message that we had uh, input in here. And then the item link, you guessed it, if we type in, I think it might actually be called link to item. There we go. So link to item. And that will then link us from that approval process directly to the item that we're looking at approving. So that speeds up that process. Further down then we can see, once it goes into that approval process, how it's going to approach um, the actual approval process. So the message it's going to be sending and who it's going to be sending it to. It's going to wait for approval and then dependent on the approval, it's then going to go off um, and either inform us that it's been approved or inform us that it's been rejected. So that is the workflow that's pre-built for us. Now, once we're happy with it, we click on that save button across the top and it's just going to save for us. And then once it's saved, we get that nice green box to say, yes, it's now ready to roll. So um, I can click on the back button here uh, and just double check that it's turned on. It should be. Um, but the status should be set to on, so it's now ready to go. So let's jump back into our document library and take a look at this in action. Then all we need to do is come back into our document library, select a document, and then click on Automate, and then we'll see here the name of the workflow that we want to run. Once we select Contract Approval, which is the workflow that we created, all we then need to do is um, populate any of the information uh, that the workflow is asking us for, um, so in this case, it's a message, so it might be say something like, Hi, please can you approve this contract, along with who we're going to send this to. So you type in the person's name in here, select them, and then click on Run Flow. What that will then do is, if you have Teams open, it will pop up a Teams message with an approval, but there's also an area inside of Teams called Approvals. So you can get to this by clicking on the three dots uh, and then searching for Approvals. And you can see all the ones that you've received and all the ones that you've previously sent. But you can see here, this has now come through um, inside of the chat area of my Teams. I can see it's come through from uh, Workflows. And then I can see here, um, it sent me this one through. So I could then choose to either Approve or Reject. And then once I click on Approve, I could give it comments, say this looks great then click on submit, and that's then submitted um, my approval um, for that particular contract. Again, like I was saying, we could have workflows which then go off and notify that person to say that um, the approval has been completed, 
or if it was rejected, they could be notified as well and they could start that process off again. I hope you enjoyed that video and if you did, please do subscribe to my channel for future videos. If you need any help with SharePoint, my contact details are in the pinned comments and the description of this video. And also stick around now for one final word from this week's sponsor, Plum Sale. I want to give another shout out to this week's video sponsor again, Plum Sale. Their tools go beyond document creation. Plum Sale provides a range of comprehensive tools for designing web forms and customizing SharePoint list forms. They've also got a ticketing system and other solutions for enhancing your Microsoft 365 and SharePoint. Head over to their site, you'll find the link down below this video and don't forget to grab your 10% off coupon Dougie for a whole year subscription of any of their products.